Having started life as an Icelandic airline, Primera Air was acquired and renamed after Primera Travel Group. The newly formed airline decided to ditch their Icelandic identity, first by acquiring a Danish operating license and then another one in Latvia. They moved their headquarters to Riga in 2014 and the airline was described as an Icelandic owned airline based in Latvia that specialised in flights from Denmark and Sweden. But the history of Primera Air dates all the way back to 2004, when it was founded as an in-house charter airline, but it wasn't until 2017 that the airline really began to catch the eye of many travellers. The management board committee decided that the airline needed to be bold and stretch their legs into new markets. So in the summer of 2017, they revealed their plans of entering into the low-cost long-haul market, offering flights from London Stansted, Birmingham and Paris Charles de Gaulle to destinations such as New York and Toronto. Now, this is a new trend that is developing within the industry. Many airlines are seeing tremendous benefits and rewards by operating in a low-cost market. But you're essentially playing with a double-sided sword if you don't execute it correctly. They had big dreams of being a pioneer and number one airline that offers transatlantic flights, and even beating Norwegian Air at their own game. So the management decided to purchase 8 Airbus A321 Neos in 2018, followed by 10 737 MAX 9s in 2019, and 8 MAX 9s plus 2 A321LRs in 2020. But it was only last year when things began to go downhill for Primera. It must be noted that 2017 was actually a very good year for the airline, because they carried well over 1 million passengers, but earlier this year, they cancelled their proposed Birmingham to Boston route due to changes in trends, and also cutting back their services to New York from UK airports from daily to only 4 flights a week. Now, their first transatlantic flight was set for April, but the launch was delayed by late deliveries of the A321neos. The airline instead used a wet lease Boeing 757 from National Airlines. Although the plane was delivered later that month, they cancelled the majority of their transatlantic flights due to severe delays of their planes. The money needed for the wet leasing of their planes rose to a considerable amount. The management of the airline weren't happy with the situation and they didn't believe that throwing more money at the situation would make it any better. But the bad news just kept on coming for the airline. In August, they confirmed that they would stop all of the European short-haul flights from Birmingham after the routes didn't perform well as expected. But the whole situation doesn't primarily rest on Airbus, because the airline is also at fault. They faced many complaints from passengers regarding poor service and late refunds. Flights were cancelled and passengers were left confused and very little attention was given to those people who were affected. But the reality of the situation is, is that the European airlines have been fighting back against low-cost airlines by operating budget carriers of their own, squeezing an already crowded market and driving fares even lower. Now KLM has Transavia, while Air France has launched June. IAG took full control of Viewlink, and last year they launched Level, which is a low-cost long-haul carrier designed to take on Norwegian and WOW. Now Lufthansa has also been developing Eurowings and German wings for the past 15 years. But the ultimate sad truth is, is that Primera's demise comes a year after Monarch Airlines went under, and also Air Berlin, which filed for bankruptcy in 2017. But if there's one thing we'll remember about Primera Air, is that they were very ambitious and very determined in entering a fierce market. But they ultimately failed when they promised so much.